Hi everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here. Today we're going to talk about Alien Resurrection and figure out if it's the worst thing ever or if it's just weird and wacky on today's Talking About Tapes. Talk, talking, talk, talking, talking about tapes. Joha Johanna, <laughs> hi. Hi. Uh, I know you're excited to talk about this movie. Very but, excited. Um, there's some bad news. You might notice that Joe's not here. Yeah, I noticed that. Well, I probably shouldn't be telling you this on camera, and I probably should have warned you. Uh, Joe died. What? Yeah, uh, last night. No more were... JoJo episodes. Well, uh, I, I don't worry, don't worry. I have a plan. Last night he was driving his car, and he crashed into a prison transfer bus. Uh, blood and viscera got everywhere. It was it was pretty gross. But I know the fans wanted him in this video, so I went to the scene of the accident, and I gathered up the blood, and I cloned him. I'm a scientist, by the way. I cloned him in a cloning machine. Uh, Where and did I you get a cloning machine? We don't have time to answer these questions right now. Uh, but I, he's, he's just getting done cooking, and I'm going to open him up in the cloning machine. That's just right off. Unfortunately, I didn't position the cameras to show the cloning machine, but take my word, it's there, and it's pretty impressive. All right, all right. Come on, Joe. Come on down. Where am I? What the? Oh! I know what happened. I must have gotten blood from one of the prisoners on the prison transfer bus and brought them back to life instead. Uh, sir, what, what is your name, sir? Prison Mike. Prison Mike. I think I had a dream about this guy. Anyway, Prison Mike, uh, have you ever I'm seen- I'm dream, you weirdo. <laughs> prison Mike, have you ever seen Alien Resurrection? Actually, yeah, I just watched it on the prison bus. Funny you ask. Okay, that's interesting. They were playing Alien Resurrection on the prison <laughs> bus. Well, this is good. We can still review the movie. I mean... What a coincidence. It sucks Joe's dead, but we gotta keep going. So I have a question real quick. So you cloned him. Did did he oh. just have the prison suit, or did it clone with him? We really gotta get into the okay, movie here. We fine. really gotta that's get fine. into the movie. So Alien Resurrection... A movie that, uh, if you watch the behind the scenes, no one wanted to make, except for whoever was the head of Fox Studios at the time. But literally, you pop in the special features, and it opens up with the the producers, like Guyler Hill and the other one. They're just like, what? It's done. You know, we opposed Alien 4, actually, uh, Walter and I. This is a bad idea. And then Sigourney Weaver was like, I purposely killed my character, so I didn't have to do more. And also because but then she, she was offered a lot of money, so she was like. <laughs> she also says it's actually funny in the video. She said, and also because I heard they were going to do Alien versus Predator or something that I thought was just sounded awful. I wanted out. And I remember seeing this interview way back when, and I went, "You're an idiot, Sigourney Weaver. It's a great idea." Turns out she was right. It was <laughs> two terrible movies. I still think it's a good idea. It's just we're two bad movies. And even the director, right down the to the director, they got a Frenchman. Jean-Pierre Jeanette, who did um, Amelie, he did Amelie after this, but he did City of Lost Children, Delicatessen. Even he, throughout the whole thing, is like, I don't know why they wanted me to do a Hollywood film. Why you want to hire me? I, I am busy. I don't want to make a, a Hollywood movie. Because I, I assume you're very well versed in Alien. Oh, absolutely. Especially three. It's like it's pretty all. much done after three, right? Like yeah, it's a wrap. It's it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Um. And they could have, like, had another planet where someone found an alien. But I guess that would have been too repetitive. I mean, they didn't have to clone Ripley either. Well, that, that's another thing. She said, like, the only reason she wanted to kill herself because it's like, because after two movies, after, there's the original. Then after two movies where it's like, she didn't want every movie to be like, oh, I'm awake again. Yeah. No one believes me. There's an alien. There's an alien. I like, they did come up with a clever way to write around that for this one. But yeah, Joss Whedon wrote this. It says, I think he, he said it's his most hated movie. Oh, I have a quote for him. I have a quote for him at the end. Joss oh. Whedon, mm. uh, who did the Avengers movies. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And he created Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, okay. I mean, I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Chrissy Swanson is my favorite Buffy. How about you, Prison Mike? Definitely my favorite. Yeah, they ruined it with that TV show. Um, yeah. <laughs> he wrote a good movie, and they had like really good people working on it, and then I guess it wasn't good enough for him, so he made that terrible TV show. Yeah, terrible TV show. And they got Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yeah. We want Christy Swanson. Eight, we should have Christy Eight Sw seasons, you know. Eight seasons of trash. We should get Christy mm -hmm. Swanson on the show. Sure. I would love to do an episode sure. of Christy Swanson. What's she doing We can talk days? about um, I have, it, I uh, caught Flowers up with in the Attic. Okay. She's in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, the one person... 
who seemed really excited to do this was Winona Ryder. What, you, what do you know Winona Ryder from? Stranger Things. They play that in prison? Yeah. You guys have yeah. a yeah. prison account? I'm all caught up on all the seasons. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. I thought a show based around children probably wouldn't be streaming in a prison. I guess it depends what part of the prison you're in. Right, yeah. <laughs> you gotta stay away from the Dementors. <laughs> The Dementors, yeah, they're they're flying all over the place, right? Oh yeah. my god! Do they play The Office in prison? Prison Mike? Yeah, <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> anyway, uh, Winona Ryder was like thrilled to be in this. Um, she was kind of killing it in the '90s. Dracula, Everett Scissorhands, Not Godfather Three, but that worked out for her in the end. Mm. Um, so yeah, she wanted to be in this. She's like, out of everyone else in the interview, she's like the most excited. They almost got Danny Boyle to direct this, huh? I did it like train spotting and 28 days later, sunshine, all that fun stuff. And like he was like attached, and then for whatever reason he left. And uh yeah, they went they went with Jean-Pierre Jeanette because he had a weird, wacky visual style. And he was really good with special effects. Like he makes these weirdo arty French films, but they're very effects heavy, and you need to be an effects heavy director for these types of films. Dead body aliens were extra slimy in this. Probably, this movie. probably. Yeah. They were extra, extra slimy. Lots of KY jelly. They brought back Studio ADI, and I got a I got a thing about one of the guys, Alec Gillis. He responded to a message I did a while back. The cinematographer is the guy who did Seven, which hmm. is really good. You ever see Seven? Yeah, I think so. With the detectives, I, I know it's a cop movie. I'm sorry, but yeah, um, yeah Seven is really really good. Uh, yeah, Darius Kaji did that, and now the visual effects supervisor Pitoff, he became a director himself. Do, do you know what film he ended up directing? What film did he end up directing? He directed the 2004 hit film Catwoman starring Halle Berry. Did you ever see Catwoman starring Halle Berry? No. It's really bad. Don't ever <laughs> watch it. And in that time, he didn't learn English. Because when Halle Berry got her Golden Razzie Award, that's an award they give out for bad movies. She got Worst Actress, and she actually accepted the award. She's like, thank you for our director, who I couldn't understand because he didn't speak English. Joss Whedon, like I said, wrote the, uh, wrote the script. Uh, the script actually stayed the same except for the ending. Uh, I forget what the other endings were supposed to be, but you know, we'll get to like what the ending eventually was. Uh, yeah, and it was the first alien film filmed in the good old U.S. of A. Hmm. And you know why? Because one, America is great. Two, Sigourney Weaver had so much power this time. She's like, I don't want to go to the fucking England again. And they're like, okay, we'll film it here. <laughs> like She had that much power after three movies. She's like, I don't want to go overseas. I just want to be able to come here and do it. Oh, when did you see this, by the way? Definitely not in theaters. I definitely caught a AMC. Oh, AMC. Yeah. I almost saw this in theaters. My grandfather had me and my sister in the car, and then he got distracted talking to someone when we missed the showtime. Amazing. <laughs> very, very on brand. <laughs> and then he rented it, and uh, we were going to watch it after dinner. Um... And if I remember right, uh, someone got into a fight. Everyone got into a fight and started cursing at each other. Hmm. And then my family sat down and watched Alien <laughs> Resurrection. Hmm. Uh, and at the time, I was a little let down by the movie. Hmm. I didn't like this movie for a while. But uh, it's since grown on me. I know it's your favorite. You think it's the best movie ever made. <laughs> ever made. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so which version of the movie did you watch? It was definitely cut down because it was on AMC. Uh, no, I mean, like, which version? For this review, which one did you watch? Theatrical? Which one did you I watch? don't know. Disc one. Disc one. <laughs> That's the only one we if had. If it's that DVD right there, they both options are on the same disc. So there's... I put the DVD player on the bus and it just said disc one. And that's the one we watched. <laughs> I don't know where disc two is. Probably stole it. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so uh, when you get this movie now on Blu-ray and DVD, you get two options, as you do with all the four mm. first four films. You get the theatrical cut and the special edition. Um, not much is different. Like I was thinking of doing a bonus video, but I'll just mention it here because mm. it's it's not much. So the movie opens up with all this like flesh, all this warped images of like flesh mixing up while the titles play. But if you watch the special edition, it opens up with a CGI bug that is tricking you into think it's an alien. Like you see the teeth open up, and then it turns out it's a tiny little fly, and a guy kills it, and then the camera pulls back and shows the big ship. I guess someone went, that's stupid. Let's just freaking start with all the flesh. It turns out there's a military vessel conducting experiments and they brought back Ripley. And that was the big question. Like, how are they bringing back Ripley? How is this possible? Were you, were you confused, Prison Mike? Yes. 
Because, Mike, you seem just, I'm just guessing, if you were allowed to have cell phones as a prisoner, you seem like the kind of guy who would uh, text their brother-in-law asking questions the entire time (laughs) they were watching the movie. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you seem like that. Yeah, I'm not going to try and figure it out on my own. Yeah, yeah. My brother-in-law does that all the time. Mm. Uh, You wouldn't like him. He's a cop. By the way, (laughs) weird coincidence, my nieces look just like you. They might be. I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> All right, well, my sister's got a lot to explain. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they, uh, they're they doing experiments on Ripley. They take the chestburster out of her. And in the special edition, the scene runs a little bit longer where the guy who's sewing her up, she, like, wakes up, like, grabs his arm and shoves his head against the thing. But I, I had a lot of questions about the chestburster. Yeah. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look like the queen chestburster from yeah. the previous film. Which is confusing because they made a toy for Alien Resurrection and it's the Queen Chestburster from the previous film. But it looks like a regular one. And this has bothered me for 20 years. And thanks to social media, I could bother the guy who made the damn thing and he answered me. So let me oh? pull that up. I asked uh, Alec Gillis, who's one of the effects guys, Studio ADI. I said, uh, why did you use a regular Chestburster for the Queen Alien instead of reusing the Queen Chestburster? Uh, This is made more confusing by the fact that the movie sold a toy of the previous one. This has bothered me since 1997. If you were in his shoes, you would probably just ignore ignore this, right? You would probably ignore this and say, who cares? I'd leave you on red (laughs) here. Instead, he actually answered. He said, uh, "Hmm, these are dim and distant memories. Two possibilities. The chest burster removed in Ripley uh, was tiny and embryotic, so maybe it didn't turn into a queen alien yet. Uh, and the other one is the de- director may not have wanted to tip his hand that the chest burster would become a queen, even though that's pretty obvious. What else would it be? Yeah. And he goes, as for the toys, the filmmakers rarely have control over what the toy companies do. So inconsistencies uh, abound. I'm impressed you've been thinking about this for 25 <laughs> years. I wish I could provide better closure. <laughs> Thanks, Alec. <laughs> so her backup. I understand the symbolism of this next scene of her in that big sheet trying to cut out of it. I get the, the weird French arty thing. It's, it's like a cocoon and she's being reborn, but I can't figure out like an in universe. Like what the, why is she in a sheet? Why is the sheet wrapped up? What, what yeah, was why that? does she have to burst through it? Do you have any, do you have any answers? Prison Mike? I wish I did, but I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's been bothering me for 25 years. A lot of things. Maybe you should just ask the special effects guy again. Ask, hey, <laughs> Alec Gillis, yeah. why? Another question for you. <laughs> Another question, Alec. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I will say uh, the look of this film is great. Yeah. Uh, the production designer, I didn't write his name down, but he worked on uh, Judge Dredd. Not the good one with Carl Urban, yeah. the Sylvester Stallone one. Uh, and say what you will about the Stallone Judge Dredd movie. It looked like the sets look great. Mm-hmm. Stallone's not the best in it and Rob Schneider sucks, but the sets look great. Brad Dorif is one of the scientists. Prison Mike. Did Brad Dorif's uh, voice sound familiar? Yes, it did. What did it sound like? It sounded like this little doll I know. <laughs> oh, Chucky. Really? Chucky? Yeah. Yes, and we actually reviewed Child's Play recently. Yes, we did. And we did Lord of the Rings, the two towns. We're reviewing a lot of Brad Dorif movies recently. We should have Brad Dorif on this show. I would honestly love that. <laughs> I would really love. I've met Brad Dorif uh, at a convention, but yeah, I would love to like sit down and talk to him. Be like, so, how about One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? That was a good movie. <sighs> Sad when you died at the end of it. Anyway, J. E. Freeman from Wild at Heart. He plays the main evil scientist guy, Ren. Uh, and I really like what they did with Ripley in this because she's kind of part alien, and that's actually a really cool way to bring her back. Because, again, it's not just, oh, I woke up, aliens are around, I'm scared. Now it's just like, okay, is she, like, on the human side? Can't she, like, sense them? Yeah, it's, it, like, even they're not really clear, like, how much of an alien she is mm-hmm. or isn't. But, yeah, she's learning to talk. I like the flashcards with her. <laughs> uh, it was a, a, a hand, hand instead of a like, glove. She's like, no, And then glove. fruit instead of cherry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, special edition. They show her a little girl. And she just starts crying. And that's the only callback to uh, Alien mm-hmm. 3 there with What's-Her-Face dying. Uh, I wonder why they cut that out. Because they have the quote from her in the beginning of the movie. Maybe it's because they don't really have like a set 
character for Ripley in this, whatever. She kind of goes back and forth from being like, yeah, like, we got to protect everyone to, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, like, she does go back and forth. It, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, I love the general, <laughs> General Perez. <laughs> he always reminds me of Adam's family because he was Tully and Adam's family. Oh, that's where I know him from. Yeah, he was the okay. bad guy. Have you ever seen Adam's family, Prison Mike? No. Sorry. You don't have that one in prison. Oh. <laughs> How about the new animated ones? No. How about the Wednesday Adams show? Yeah. You watched that one? I did. It's on Netflix. I mean, <laughs> it's on Netflix. <laughs> Stranger so Things. Yeah. Netflix. I mean, so, so the prison so has ne- so the prison has Netflix, but the prison bus has DVD. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> okay. Cool. Don't cool. ask questions. What do you think they're gonna stream it in the prison bus? <laughs> well, at some point, There's no this- Wi-Fi in the prison. Yeah, bus. I, I'm surprised it's a DVD. I thought it'd be a VHS. Well, look, look, look. They upgraded for them. Hopefully, after this, you have a beautiful life of freedom. But if you ever end up back in prison, the first two Adams <laughs> Family movies are on Netflix. Okay, <laughs> check them out. Mind. They're really, really, really funny. And like I said, General Perez, he is in uh, the first one. Uh, he's not happy that Ripley has memories because he's like, that's the worst possible. Like she literally exterminated the aliens. We don't want her doing that again, you asshole. We just spent a lot of time bringing these fucking things back. Uh, then we see the uh, queen alien for a second. Now, remember, part of this movie was kind of like an apology for the last one. Even though we like it. You like it, right, Alien 3? Yeah. Okay. Um, we all like it. But at the time, a lot of general audience didn't. So this was promised like with more action and more vi- violence and more like fighting. And it does have a lot of gun stuff in this. So I remember when I was a kid, I was like, oh, man, I can't wait to see how she fights the queen this time. Yeah. And then I was was eventually disappointed. (laughs) Um, And yes, they are slimier, the aliens in this. Like, she's just tripping. Huh? KY Jelly. It is. It's always been KY Jelly. Uh, I was um, like a freaking like gallon ton of it. Like (laughs) what I think it was. uh, They show the aliens more in this one in brighter lights. And I think the idea is. It's the fourth movie. Like, we get it. We know what the alien looks like. Let's just show them. And I will say these are the best looking. No, I don't like the design too much. I like the more I like the more biomechanical design, but when it comes to like effect, like, these things look like they're actually alive. I don't know. Yeah. What did you think? They look they looked way better than the other three previous. Yeah, movies they look too. I mean the other ones were smart and like hit them in <laughs> shadows and stuff, but these things look like living, breathing things. But even just like this movie overall, I say looks better than Alien Three. Mm. But I th- I, sorry, Alien 3 is the better movie than <laughs> Alien Resurrection, as much as I love it. <laughs> I thought you loved this one the most. It's number one, my favorite movie of all time. <laughs> so yeah, Ripley finally asked Brad Dorif, she's like, how did I, what am I doing here? We used blood samples from Fury 16 on ice. Fury 16? He got the name of the planet wrong, and that is also, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get Brad Dorif in here. <laughs> I'll be like, hey, you got the name of the fucking planet wrong. Yeah, I'm sure it's because of him. <laughs> Was that the first question she asked him when she was trying to pronounce fork? And then all of a sudden she just asked this random question. Yeah. But she couldn't pronounce fork. I said, how did, I was thinking like, <laughs> how's she tr- struggling to say fork? But then she asked this random question, like perfectly. <laughs> yeah, those are two, like, how do I say the name of the utensil? Also, how am I alive? And how yeah. would she even understand his explanation? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. But yeah, they found blood that was taken on ice <laughs> at Fury 161. Um, and I guess the idea is because the alien pulls from your DNA, mm-hmm. maybe it mixes. So they were able to get her and the alien back from that blood. Why it took 200 years is anyone's guess. Don't worry about it. But they did. <laughs> There's more from the extended cut, but I forget a lot of it. But this scene, because the big question is, what happened to the company? And in this, she asked them, well, or she thinks, she assumes that they're the evil company, mm-hmm. Waylon Yutani from the first three. And he's like, oh, no, 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 we're not the evil company. And in the special edition, you find out they were bought out by Walmart. <laughs> and I got to find it. Years ago, I made I made the Waylon Yutani logo, but I made it like Walmart with like the Walmart colors. And I kind of want to make that into a shirt, but I don't know if Disney and Fox or Walmart will sue me for it. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I mean, it'd be a parody. Yeah, I guess so. But I do like that the guy is just like, we're not some greedy company. (laughs) We're the military and the government. It's like, oh, yeah, I feel so much better from that. (laughs) And the other two, she's warning them. And this one, she's just like giving them a heads up. Like, it doesn't, she's like, you're all going to die. Just want to let you all know. You're all going to die. That alien's going to get out. You're all fucked. You're all idiots. Let me know how that works out for you. All right. So then we meet the space pirates. 
the, the from the Aru uh, no, they're on the Betty. They're on the Betty. What did you think of the space pirates? I like space space pirates. Yeah, and I kind of see this kind of feels like the seed of uh, Firefly. Joss Whedon ended up making a show about space pirates afterwards. That, that may do? be in the alien universe, according to the first episode. What was that? And how'd that show do? It got canceled in one season, but it was really, really good, and it got a cult following. So they were able to finish it in a movie that was really, really good and bombed financially. So Firefly and Serenity, they're really, really good, and then no one pays to see them. They screwed over that show first, though, because they aired the episodes out of order. Yeah, they did. Literally, the episode where they introduced everyone... They made it like the second or third episode. They picked a random episode that was more action heavy to air first and no one knew what was going on. The captain is Michael Wincott, who was just in Nope. He was the the camera guy in Nope, which mm -hmm. Nope was really good. I really like I talked Nope. about that with Adam. You should check out Nope. Nope was cool. Nope. Um, also an alien movie. Uh, Christy is played by Gary Dorman from CSI. And I think he got arrested at some point. There was something up with this actor. Have you ever met Gary Dorman in uh, prison? No, I can't say. I ever ran into him or anything. No, no. Yeah. He probably didn't have the dreadlocks and everything from this movie. Maybe he didn't recognize. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's something. He went to prison for something. And I, for the uh -huh. life of me, I can't remember why. Winona Ryder plays Cull, who's like a new member of their mm. crew. Good old Ron Perlman plays Johnner. Good old Ron Perlman, who tweets about peeing on his hand and shaking people's hands. That guy's a weirdo. He's a fucking... Like, other than just, like, being crazy liberal, he's also just a crazy guy. I, I have a question about yeah. P, because this was a <laughs> this was an actual debate, and if anybody follows me on Twitter, they saw me tweeting about this, too, and you're all disgusting. Do you pee in the shower? Yes. Oh, God damn. Do you pee in the shower? <laughs> no! Okay, thank God. <laughs> what guy doesn't pee in the shower? Every guy pees in the shower. Uh, maybe when I was, like, a kid, but... That, that's what I said! I was like, maybe I peed in the shower as a kid, but I do not it's pee in so the shower now. Convenient. I it goes right into the drain. <laughs> That's literally what everybody like else is I'm peeing everywhere all over the walls. <laughs> That's what everybody else is This saying. is, by the way, I know I bring it up all the time. This is literally a Seinfeld episode. George gets I, in, I know. Everybody was sharing the fucking George gets I know, in trouble I know. It's all pipes. It's yeah. all pipes. They all go to the same place. No, different pipes go to different places. All gets filtered. <laughs> I mean, I, that's know. why you don't drink tap water either. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not against, like, if you pee in the shower, whatever, just don't make it, like, a thing of it. A lot of the argument was, like, oh, like, I feel so relaxed in there, so I just go. And it's like, are you not an adult? Can you not hold your bladder? <laughs> like, No. It's not, I guess it's no. not as bad as shitting in the shower. Like, don't do that. Oh, I do that, too. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't you do waffle that. waffle it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just blend it up. <laughs> Okay. If, well. this is, if this is your if this is your first episode, <laughs> did you expect to hear about shit in the shower? Anyway. <laughs> God damn it. Um, and then the the weird French wheelchair guy. That's just someone who acted in the director's other movies, and I guess he was like, "Can my friend be in the movie?" And they're like, "Yeah, sure, whatever." And then there's some girl who plays a character called Hillard, and then I checked her IMDb. She's yeah. like in nothing. Yeah. She's in Fear and Loathing, which I covered. She's one of and the. And then she like stopped. She's one of the acting. dinosaur people in Fear and Loathing when uh, Johnny Depp's having that like LSD trip, mm. and that's it. She was never in anything after that. I was like, huh, mm. weird. Anyway, uh, they're delivering cargo to uh, the military ship, and this is funny. Uh, I want to mention now. I am going to review the video game later this week, Ooh. the PlayStation One game. I played yeah. it. Um, the little arcade game that's on the ship. That was made by the people who did the video game, which, by the way, the video game for this movie didn't come out until 2000. Yeah, it was delayed, like, massively. It was super yeah. delayed. Huh? I was shaking my head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you said, huh? So, the arcade cabinet that's on the ship, like, they designed that, and they were, like, real upset that it didn't mm -hmm. get enough screen time. So, on, like, their opening cinematic for the game, they show their arcade game. Oh, my God. It. But, yes, uh, check out that episode, because the, the video game, it looks like the movie. It feels kind of like the movie, but you could tell that they did not like the movie and they just yeah. gave their own story. Uh, John is real mean to wheelchair guy. He throws like a knife into his leg. Yeah. Which, by the way, just because he can't feel his leg doesn't mean he's not like <laughs> injured. Yeah, like he's still bleeding. Yeah, she just pulls the knife out. She's like, oh, what an asshole. Like, hey, can you get like some alcohol on that guy? <laughs> like, what are you he's never going to get infected. Also, um, you might know more about this. I'm not well versed in knives, believe it or not. But like, she just, like, breaks the handle off that knife, like, real easily. That's a shitty knife. <laughs> I feel like he I would mean, have probably. a better knife. 
I'm more of a gun guy. <laughs> oh, you're more <laughs> of a gun guy. I'm not gonna ask why you went to prison, but I'm. I'm, I'm oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I must have accidentally. You know what it was, Joanne? Huh. I must have accidentally cloned one of the prison the guards' guns. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there must like have been gun, gun de- clothing, gun DNA, uh, stylish hat. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Thank you for your service, Tony. <laughs> Uh, as with most 90s movies, the miniatures for the ships look great. And I'm still upset that we pulled away from that after the Star Wars movies. Yeah. It's like, well, all these miniatures and the, against the blue screen and the matte shots, they look beautiful. And then like t- t- five, six years later, they're like, everything's digital now. It's like, thanks, George Lucas. So the computer on the ship is father. Yeah. Yeah. Because the ship, the computer on the first movie was mother. And it's like, okay. Whatever. I, uh, I think they thought. I think Joss Whedon thought he was real witty writing that. I mean, look at a lot of his movies. He thinks he's very witty. He thinks he's very witty. I know he's good with the ladies. Oh yeah, Joss Whedon's great with the ladies. Yeah, Wonderful. you're not too familiar with Joss Whedon, are you? No. So Joss Whedon for years was like, I'm an ultra feminist, and I write movies and scripts for girls, strong women, strong women, and I'm on the right side of history. <clears throat> and then during the Me Too movement. It turns out like he was just like you just use it as fame to like hook up with chicks and threatening to like uh, get rid of their careers. And yeah, whatnot. harassing people, whatever. Um, Michelle uh, Trackenberg, whatever. How you say her, her uh, last Tra- name? Yeah, yeah. Uh, who played Dawn and Buffy? Yeah. Apparently, was not allowed to be in a room alone with him. That's how bad it was on Buffy. Yeah. Yeah. So like, seems like a cool guy to me. Yeah. I don't know. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I always say I'm like, I you can can't be alone with a child. That seems cool. <laughs> All right. Oh, I didn't know about that. I'm she not... was a child. She was like uh, 17. Oh, 16, 17. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Buffy. I'm talking about Buffy in the nineties. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, point is he like cheated on his wife or something. I was like, okay, the whole ultra feminist Joss Whedon couldn't relate to him, but uh, lying to hook up with chicks. I'm like, oh yeah, that Joss Whedon. I can, <laughs> I can relate to him a lot. Uh, he also messed up Jack- Zack Snyder's Justice League. Not that it was going to be good anyway. Um, it was like a whole thing. Oh, I like when they're uh, they're te- they're checking them for weapons and the wheelchair guy. <laughs> he has the best line where like the guy puts the metal detector and it's just going off and he just goes, "Want to check the chair?" <laughs> I'm like, "I'd say that, Joss Whedon. That's a good line. That's a good line. I hope you hooked up with a hot girl the day you wrote that line." <laughs> <laughs> <Jesus> <laughs> The general pays them in cash, which apparently is very hard to come by in the future, which I can relate to. Whenever I get cash, I'm just like, oh, this feels so quaint. I'm not used to having physical. Quaint? I'm like, oh, I feel like a peasant put in my (laughs) bank account. (laughs) Uh, Or a strip club. Anyway. um, But it's been a while since we went to a strip club. We should go to a strip club again. I'm okay. Ian still hasn't gone, has he? He has no interest. Why? Why do you want to go to a strip club? Because they're fun. Such a dirtball, Tony. <laughs> I'm sorry, Such Prison Mike. <laughs> I'm sorry, Prison Mike. I, you seem like a good guy who will never go to a strip club. So no. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that his whiskey comes in cube form and there's a laser that melts it. I'm like, where is that technology right now? I want that. That mm. seems like such a cool thing. <laughs> Uh, my cousin, when I first watched this, I didn't know what was going on. My cousin Jess had to like explain to me what that was. <laughs> uh, turns out the cargo is people. And the government is using them as hosts for the aliens. I do like the eggs in this one. Mm-hmm. The eggs actually, this time the eggs like kind of move and pulse. It was before they just opened. Yeah. That was it. But they almost feel like they're organisms themselves. I feel bad for the guy who like wakes up right as the face hugger is about to jump on him. <laughs> and he's just like, ah! ah! And they're just like watching while being horrified. Ah! Ah! Sorry. Unbelievable. Hello? Hello? Hi, am I talking to Anthony? Yep. Antonio? Anthony, okay. Uh, this is Alex with Member Services, and I'm calling to inform you some changes that has been applied to your timeshare. At <laughs> to bring you up to date about those changes. I will be quick, all right? Um... I don't have a timeshare, but real quick, what did you think of Alien Resurrection? Do you think they should have just left Sigourney Weaver dead? Or did you like that they cloned her and brought her back for the sequel? Uh, I would like the second option as well. You you like that they brought her back for the sequel. You're, you're fine with that in Alien Resurrection. 
Yes, sir. Okay, so what did you think of the newborn alien at the end? A lot of people were upset that the queen alien died while giving birth and the... Uh, uh, spoiler. Um, and people don't like the design of the newborn alien. Uh, they think it looks like a weird giant baby. I'm personally fine with it, but I would really like to know your opinion on it. Well, sir, I think genetics expert might help them, help us, like, like, uh, no, like, um, uh, with some experiments or something so that they can, like, look like human or plastic surgery. Don't you think that might be awesome? I don't think you're familiar with the types of aliens in the film Alien Resurrection. I don't think you're updated on the lore. They're not quite the abducting people aliens. They're like space monster, like bug sort of aliens. And, and if you can't get these details about aliens right, I don't trust you with the timeshare that I don't own. <laughs> I mean, call me all day. Was he laughing? I'm sorry. That's the first one that actually talked with you. Yeah, they usually hang up. <laughs> yeah, they hang they up. Usually they hang, hang up. up right away. I thought he was gonna hang up. <laughs> Why do they call me about? A, my family has a timeshare, but I don't know. Is that the one they're talk, calling about? Yeah, I don't Anthony, know. Anthony, so your dad? I don't know. Yeah, we probably just messed up my vacation. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Why would my number be there? Anyway, wait, why are you vacationing with my family, Prison Mike? <laughs> Don't worry about it. There's a reason those kids look like me. We need to like talk me. to your sister. <laughs> There's a reason a, those kids look like me. I, I really should call my sister. <laughs> <laughs> so Ripley's playing basketball. Uh, and she's pretty good at it. She's Very pretty good. good at basketball. Yeah. Um, Ron Perlman tries to flirt with her. It does not go well. What if Ron Perlman tried to flirt with you? I'm down. Like current Ron Perlman? I don't care. Well, no, no. Who brags about peeing on his hands. No. And peeing in the shower. And peeing no. in the shower. Oh, and God, no. Like yells at Trump like years after Trump has already been out of office. From Hellboy 2 and back Ron Perlman. <laughs> okay, so like Police Academy 6 or 7. I know he's in one of those <laughs> to, to, to Hellboy 2. Yeah. In the makeup? Hellboy 2 in the makeup? Hell yeah. What about him as uh, the Beast from the Beauty and the Beast show? Sure. Sold. Yeah, you would be. Yeah, anyway, I would be. <laughs> uh, Sigourney Weaver's not into him. Mm -hmm. uh, and she, like, hits him in the balls. Uh, I like that. What's his face? Christy picks up, like, the fucking barbell and just hits her in the face. She just kind of brushes it off. Yeah, she just starts bleeding. She's, She's just, like, like, bleeding. I'm like. <laughs> I, I just don't even see. Like, she's so quick and, like, agile. And she moves out of the way. She's so strong. But he just. Just let her hit him in the face with that and just took it. Like, why didn't you move out of the way? Uh, I guess it was to show how tough she was. Like, wrestlers do that. Like, when they let people hit them and they like, they're like, it's like they beat him up over and then they stop. Kind of like the Undertaker would. Yeah, like on a yeah the Undertaker and he would let them like, like, bitch. Yeah, yeah. Or like Kane would like get hit with a guitar and he would just stand there and would be like, ah. Or they do the thing and then they hit them and then they're just like, yeah. Um, but yeah, they get into a little <laughs> bit of fight, love a fight. We find out that her blood is acidic. Not as strong as the alien, but they show it like starting to melt. Mm -hmm. And then no one notices that, right? Because she like no, wipes no one it. notices yeah. it. Uh, here, she takes the basketball and she throws it behind her, and she actually did that for real. They had a cut. They had like, to right cut away because Ron so Perlman she actually, freaked out. I forget who it was. She she hung out with some NBA guy to like practice it, and she really, really wanted to do it. Uh, and I think they tried it a few times and then she did it. And Ron Perlman, you could like, look real quick. He got like, so excited. He ruined the take. So he just, he turned and went, yeah, like he got like real excited. So he's about to turn. And then they cut to like a close up of him turning and just looking angry. <laughs> but I remember like the one camera guy is like, I wish the camera was just a little higher. Cause the basketball goes out of frame and people didn't believe it. They like thought it was fake. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, that's kind of impressive. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do it. No. I guess if you practice. I, I know you wouldn't be able to do it. I could. I you literally could not. You personally. I yeah. personally <laughs> could not do it. Uh, but good for her. Uh, I don't know why alien DNA makes you good at basketball. Don't worry about it. I don't remember the other don't aliens. Don't worry about it. <laughs> like, they were agile and anything. I don't remember them throwing a lot of stuff, though. Don't anyway. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so while this is happening, Brad Dorif is uh, checking out the aliens. And he gets face to face with the one. He's, he's like, like making the face back. Yeah, at he's it. like he's like <laughs> interacting with it. And again, this is like the most lit we've ever seen an alien. Like it's like real bright. And, uh, and I like the alien and him are just like following each other. The aliens in this, they're they're a little smarter. 
And mm. I think it was because of Jurassic Park. They're like, we want them to feel more like Velociraptors a little bit. Because Jurassic Park is popular. But yeah, I, I do like that the alien tries to bite him. And then like he hits it with like that cold, that freezing spray. Yeah, and then it starts to learn. It learns right away. Because he's about to do it again. And yeah. the alien like backs yeah, off. He's just like, all right, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Brad Dwarf thinks he's the man right now. He's got a rude awakening coming yeah, to him. Not, he is not the man. <laughs> but yeah, this is something that you probably wouldn't have seen in the other films. Just a character like trying to kiss the alien through a glass. <laughs> and I can see how some people watch this and be like, this is weird. But I think it's weird and wacky in a good way. I'm fine with it. And I'm fine with like uh, the government doing experiments on the alien. Because uh, there was a really good comic, uh, which I would love to see adapted into a film. It's called Nightmare Asylum. I think it's Nightmare Asylum. Where like this crazy general, like he he has a bunch of aliens and he's trying to train them to be like soldiers. And like, he trains them by like burning all the aliens in front of the queen. So the queen finally forces the aliens to do what the guy wants. And he gets all confident. And then he goes on his first mission with them thinking they'll listen to him. And as soon as they get off the ship, they just murder him. It's such a good story. <laughs> Almost as good as aliens pig. That's another comic. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> yeah. So then call fakes being drunk. And she tries to what is she, she tries to pick up a mug with boxing gloves. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. her best fake trunk. That was a little weird. Uh, but I do like that she. Where did the boxing gloves come from? I guess they training, were in a. They I guess were in a like training a room. Yeah. I like that uh, fucking QVC or Home <laughs> Shopping Network still exists. However, like four hundred years in the future. Whatever. I'm like, oh, those are still going around. Okay. Uh, but I like that she like. Throws the boxing glove at his drink. And then Ron Perlman knocks the other guy's drink. <laughs> um, but yeah, she goes to kill Ripley. It turns out she knows exactly who Ripley is. Like, she joined with this crew to get there. Uh, but then she hesitates because they took the alien out of her. And I like this whole exchange between them. Where she's like, you're not Ripley. She died 200 years ago. And Ripley's like, who am I? I don't even know. Uh, but then this is when she starts letting her know, like, yeah, I can kind of feel the aliens. I can kind of, like, communicate with them. Not communicate with them. It's like but, kind of like a psychic link-ish yeah. thing. And I even like that she puts her hand on the knife. Mm -hmm. That was kind of cool because it like doesn't bother her because it'll heal real quick. Uh, yeah, it's just a really, really cool scene. And like, Cole is just like, she like hates Ripley. You're a sting. A construct. They grew you in a fucking lab. Projecting. Projecting. <laughs> as we find out, she is projecting. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, even, even at this point, Ripley's just like, yeah, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna die too. Spoil I just want to ruin everyone's day. You're all gonna die. <laughs> yeah. Now that I've warned you, you might have a heads up, <laughs> but you're all gonna die. Uh, but yeah, she gets captured by, uh, Ren and he thinks they're all terrorists. He's ready to kill them. Uh, it turns out they all had guns hidden on them. I mean, they kind of are terrorists. Not terrorists. They're pirates. Only she was there to fuck up with the experiment. Oh, yeah. They had nothing to do with it. Uh, but they don't believe them. They think they're all involved. But I like how uh, Chrissy's like guns come out, like taxi driver out of his thing. I like that Ron Perlman's mug, his thermos, actually was a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love that they just the security just let that go by without even checking. Oh, it's just a mug. Oh, it's just a mug. Yeah. 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 I don't know how Chrissy's arm ones went by. <laughs> I think originally, and it happens they a little bit. They had the best security, yeah, clearly. Or, well, from what I heard, originally all the guns were going to be built into the guy's wheelchair. And at some point they would all disassemble their guns from him. But then they have that scene where they're already like they ended up not going. With it. So it is a little confusing uh, how they got the guns in there. But the wheelchair guy in a minute, he does kind of break it off. Yeah, uh, and he had a bunch of parts on his gun. Like, yeah, he yeah. couldn't put all them guns on. But that yeah, originally they were all going to be in there. And for whatever reason, yeah. they didn't do it. Um, but yeah, so they kill a bunch of the soldiers except for Ren and. Tuco Salamanca from Breaking Bad. Did you realize that was him? No, actually, I did not. Yeah, that main soldier guy yeah. that's with him, that's Tuco Salamanca. Oh. <laughs> he wasn't as, like, crazy as he is in Breaking Duh. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, for years, I remember when I was watching Breaking Bad. I love the reverse. When I watch Breaking Bad, I'm like, oh, that's Stefano from Alien Resurrection. <laughs> and now I watch Alien Res Resurrection, I'm like, that's Tuco Salamanca <laughs> from Breaking Bad. <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> look at the one roll. <laughs> I still got to catch up on Better Call Saul. Same. I heard it was great. Did you ever watch Better Call no, Saul? I, I heard the first season or whatever was boring, and then you got to get through that, and it gets good, and I just didn't even bother. See, I, That's I, how I feel about The Office. I enjoy... The, a show? Yeah. The first season People is the best that, season. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, the most awkward 
and uncomfortable, and it's that's what makes it so great. I always hear the opposite. No. Everybody's like, oh, skip the first season, watch it all, and then no go way. back to the first skip season. Skip the other. What, when did it, they had nine seasons? Yeah, they went on. When, once too Michael long. Scott leaves, then you yeah. stop watching it. Yeah, stop watching it for yeah. Michael Scott leaves. The first season um, is the best. Well, the first season is so awkward because they're trying to be like the British office, right. which is yeah. way. If you like awkward stuff, the British one yeah. is like. I gotta watch that one because yeah, I, I love don't know if you like. I love movie. the British one. Yeah, and it's a lot shorter. I didn't watch the newest movie, but I love of the British office, and that's the first season's trying to be like that, and then they ended up yeah. doing their own thing. There's like multiple offices. There's like a German one, a French really? one. Yeah. Dude, Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant, they're like, yeah, let's keep this cash cow rolling. They're like, yeah, why the hell not? Yeah, they're Gervais like, France, you want to make an office? <laughs> sure, here you go. <laughs> like, yeah, they get royalties from all of it. Those guys will never have to work another day in their I life. Because of the, not just one office show, multiple office shows. <laughs> How do we get on the office? <laughs> Breaking Bad and Better Call <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> so the aliens, they're, they're not thrilled about being captured. Nope. They're not big fans of it. They want to climb up in those ducks. They want to climb up in those ducks and uh, run around pipes, uh, all that stuff that they love. Yep. Secrete liquid everywhere and make a weird KY jelly. Yeah. (laughs) They have have KY jelly to spread. Uh, (laughs) KY jelly to spread. (laughs) So they they have three aliens in the one thing, and I like that the two aliens realize, like, oh, wait, we could just kill that guy. And I like that the guy realized this probably happens in prison, where the prisoners turn on each other. Oh, yeah, all the time. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, they, they they single out the one alien. I kind of feel bad for the alien because it's trying to fight back. It's like the find uh, the weakest of the bunch. Yeah. Uh, no, but they like rip up his guts, which is clever. Which, although it's, it's an issue now because it's like, how did you not account for this? Like, you knew their blood was acidic. Why wouldn't you make like something that... So are they immune to each other's blood? Yes. Okay. They are immune to their own acid. Which, by the way... In the first Alien, remember when they they cut the face hugger and it's like burning through like multiple, and that's like a big deal, and that was a giant ship, and they're like, oh shit, we're all gonna die, it's gonna melt through the thing. And this one, and t- that's a smaller ship, this new one, the Alien's guts pour out, it's going through all these floors, and like no one is concerned about it. It's like that should dissolve throughout the whole goddamn ship and kill them all. Yeah, like it would go through the bottom of the ship. Yeah, out, and then. It would- create all that gravity like before yeah that's what i was wondering why what happened with that i don't know they they change they change how the blood works uh from movie to movie and then you get to the alien versus predator where it's like sometimes the predator's weapons melt and then sometimes they don't melt it's a little confusing um but yeah brad dorif has the genius idea to go in there and check why wouldn't you just let the (sighs) army dudes be like hey the aliens got out they're on this floor below this thing go go shoot them Instead, he's like, well, I got to peek in there. And of course, he gets grabbed. He gets grabbed. Not killed. We don't see him get killed. Uh, but yeah, I have why I have it here, all caps. Why did Dorif go in there? And then it's followed by, why would the soldier go in there? The soldier opens up the door. And like, right away, I'd be like, oh, hell no. I'm no. not. What that's. This is. Be like, I'm getting on an escape pod. I'm yeah. out. <laughs> I'd call and be like, oh, yeah, the aliens definitely got out. <laughs> I'm you. not walking in there. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> Uh, instead, he investigates, and I like that the alien remembered where the button was. Yep. He just freezes, dude. This is the most violent of the four. Like, it is gory as hell, yeah. this one. Like, the guy's arm freezes against the wall and then, like, cracks Terminator 2 style, but he's not a robot, so blood gets everywhere. It's pretty brutal. And then the alien roars. <laughs> None of the pirates care about wheelchair guy. I thought that was funny. <laughs> They're like, what about this dude? They're like, fuck him. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, he does a good job fighting an alien on his own. I mean, they cared about him in this, uh, the swim scene. A little bit later. Which but was they, a great like, scene. I was yeah, he just shows up. So like, oh, good, that guy's back. But at no yeah. point do they make it a priority to find him. But I feel bad for him because like the blood goes on his leg, which again, I know he can't feel it, but like it's melting his leg. Like it's, it's yeah. a problem. Uh, and then well, gets, doesn't he start feeling it? He touches it and it hurts, That's and then another drop okay. goes behind his ear, and I'd be like, "That's ah, what it is." Okay. He should be deaf for the rest of the yeah. movie. <laughs> uh, but I like that he's like breaks the gun apart. He's like shooting the thing through the grate. I don't know why it comes back after the first time it was shot. Um, but that's a kind of a cool scene because it ends. You don't know if he died or not. Ripley, the aliens are trying to get to Ripley, and I like that she uses her blood to get out. I don't know. I don't know why there was a door in her cell that led to a tiny hallway. Do you? Do you have any uh, theories on that, Prison Mike? 
I do, but I'm going to keep them to myself. In case you ever go back to jail in prison? Correct. He, he, he knows about the secret doors that lead to tiny hallways in prison. Mm. <laughs> Uh, but yes, yeah, so she gets out that way. I'm sure Joss Whedon wrote himself into a corner and he came up with that bullshit escape thing. Do you think he blames that on the director? Sure. Joss Whedon really, I'll read a quote at the end. He likes to blame everyone else for this movie not being received well. So the aliens are going around, they're running the muck. Uh, the soldiers are getting in their escape pods. Uh, the one crawls into the escape pod and just murders all of them. I feel bad for the guy. The guy is the last one in and then he's the first one out trying to run yeah. away and it grabs him back down. Uh, and then the general throws the most cartoony looking grenade I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> like a bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it like, like, not just bad CGI, it even acts like a cartoon. It rolls and then it like spins around. <laughs> oh, it spins around into the thing. Uh, and he blows them up and he, he gives them a nice salute. And then the back of his brain gets punched out. But unlike any, this is the first alien movie where the, someone gets punched in the head and they're like, oh, I got to check out what's going on. He like pulls out a piece of his brain. And I assume that guy is just watching while all this is happening. He's there with some dude. I guess that would be, you would want to see how that ends. Uh, I mean. If an alien punched the back of your skull out and you were still like walking and moving around, I'd be like, I need to, I need to see what happens here. <laughs> I'm kidding. I would run. Uh-huh. I would run. Did you see that uh, viral video? I don't know if you can see viral videos in prison. Uh, someone shared a video where it's like, don't be this guy. And these people are at an outdoor dining thing. And this uh, guy comes off a motorcycle with a gun to, like, hold them up. And a dude's there, like, on a date with a girl. And, like, as soon as the gunman walks up past him, he just gets up and leaves. <laughs> and the girl stays there. And everyone else stays there. And everyone's giving the guy shit. And I said, I would do the exact same thing without even hesitating. Why didn't everyone leave? That was a good... Everyone's like, why would he leave that girl? I was like, why did the girl stay? The gunman clearly was focused on the other two. She yeah, I also... think it was like a hit on somebody. I think that's what that was supposed to be. Yeah, they were like... Like, no one got shot or anything. I, they get chased off by the guys who are on mm. the bar. But it's like, why didn't the girl also get up? <laughs> like, the guy was so smart. And everyone shitted on this brave hero. This is... <laughs> How is he a hero? He's a hero. <laughs> okay. By, by using common sense, he will inspire other people in that situation. And he will be remembered... As a hero who changed the world in future history. <laughs> My God. Just like Prison Mike will be a hero one day. Absolutely. When they when they figure out whatever he went to jail for is not a crime. Correct. I won't cut your throat and leave you here to die. You understand me? By the way, Michael Wincott has like the best voice ever. <laughs> the captain of the Betty, the mm -hmm. pirate captain, where he talks like this. He has like the coolest voice. That's why I was glad he was in Nova. I don't see him in too like too many mainstream movies these days. Yeah. He decides, oh, wow, there's some guns with slime on them. Let me go check that out for no fucking reason. And it's always bothered me. I'm like, why did he do this? And even the characters are like, hey, can you just come here? Uh, so sure enough, he dies. Maybe they just wanted a reason to kill him off. I, I don't know. I just, mm -hmm. if I was writing this script, which apparently is perfect and no, like everything he writes is perfect. I would have come up with a better w way to kill the captain other than he stops to look at some guns. That's like the dumbest thing I've ever seen. But it's pretty cool when the aliens like pull him down and like punch through his uh, belly and yeah. everything. Uh, and I like when the aliens corner the rest of the crew. The CGI is a little weird. The C they, they look weird when they're CGI. They, they look like a different color yeah. almost. Yeah. Like sometimes they look gray and I'm like, that didn't, doesn't match. Um, but yeah, Ripley shows up. She blows the thing's brains out. They're just shooting, Will again, the reason it was acid blood in the first movie is because the writer was like, I wanted to make sure it was really hard to kill the alien. You couldn't just shoot it because blood would. And then this movie, they just were like, yeah, we're just going to shoot them all the time in space. Like, there's no problem. It's Maybe they have some type of fail safe out there. It's been a few hundred years at this point. No, because in the beginning, <laughs> the general's like, I'm worried one of your people are going to shoot a bullet through the hole. But meanwhile, there's this acid that's just getting everywhere. And I'm like, this is... Yeah, making all kinds of holes. And <sighs> Joss Whedon, I would not have trusted him with Avengers after watching this. Cole is like unsure if she should join, but Christy, I guess, is now the, the leader. And he's like, nah, she's coming with us. She shot an alien in the face. We could probably trust her. Uh, I do like the uh, callback to the first movie where he's like, I don't trust anyone. I don't trust him. I don't trust anybody. We can't trust her. I don't trust anyone. Oh, and Call doesn't like the uh, souvenir Ripley gives her. 
She pulls that freaking tongue out of it. And I checked. Winona Ryder, she touches the very end of the tongue. Her hand should be melting apart. I got I to gotta talk to Joss Whedon. I, I said, Joss Whedon, you have a lot to explain for yourself. You should probably DM, DM him, too. I'm going to DM, and he's going to, like, look. He hasn't been on Twitter since, like, I'm gonna be, 2020. I'm going to be like, you have a lot to explain. He's like, look, my lawyer. Oh, no, not about that. Uh, so the alien <laughs> blood. Now, in your... <laughs> but, yeah, wheelchair guy reunites with them. Uh, they find out that the ship is headed for Earth. And apparently Earth sucks so much that no one wants to go there. Like, even Ron Perlman, he's like, oh, what a shit. Like, like, everyone, like, I don't know what happened on Earth in this time, but everybody hates it. Uh, but that's one of the emergency things. It's got to send back to Earth. Uh, during this, Ripley finds a room. with Because, uh, by the way, we forgot to mention, she has an eight on her uh, forearm. And I'm shocked that my brother-in-law didn't text me asking what the eight was. I thought for sure that was one of the texts I was going to get from him. Well, I mean, maybe he watched <laughs> Netflix. And <laughs> just like Prison Mike and watched Stranger Things. So understand I mean, what the eight would be. Huh? If I was your brother-in-law, I would have texted and asked you what the eight was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, he just but slipped we, his mind. <laughs> <laughs> we find out that sh Ripley, this Ripley is the eighth clone. And we see the first seven clones and they're all, they're on our shirts. They're all like horrifying. Yeah. So I get, not yours. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I guess the idea is that when they got the blood, the DNA was mixing too much. So it would always be some amalgam of the alien and Ripley like together. And actually, I don't know if you notice. When she passes the first six, she goes past like a wall that has all the failed chest bursters. Also, oh no, I never. There's like a that. tube with like failed chest bursters in them, uh, but then she finds seven, and it's like sad because they're still keeping it alive. Kill me, <laughs> which the whole kill me thing has been done in the previous film. Well, it got deleted from the first movie, but it was in the second. Uh, but yeah, like it's actually really sad because like now Ripley is like, oh god, this is what I am. She's like, I'm not even. Ripley, I'm some weird construct thing, and like I'm, it's real depressing. What do you think? Yeah, she said, "Kill me," and I okay, let's put her out of her misery. She's suffering. Then you just set her on fire. <laughs> she's not even gonna die right away. She's gonna yeah. burn, and she's gonna feel that until she dies. It's awful. Like, why would you kill her that way? That's the yeah. worst way to kill somebody. <laughs> no, I 100 percent because that's always bothered me. <laughs> that's that always... it was it bothered me instantly. So I get I like... so I how I think about it. Well, they're definitely not worried about bullets going through the hole because we've already established they don't care about bullets. Um, the way I think is, like, we know what happens to the ship, but at that point, they just think they're going back to Earth. I think her thing is, I'm going to light this all on fire. Yeah, destroy it all. So they can't recreate me again. And I get that, but at the same time, you're like, can you shoot her first? I don't yeah, think seriously. you need to light her on fire. Just put her out of her misery first, and then light yeah. her on fire if you want. Yeah, like, light her on fire afterward. <laughs> like, like. People get cremated. They don't get cremated a lot. Well, yeah. I guess some people get cremated alive, but like, like th that's not usually like. Uh, yeah, it's it's a little it's a little too rough. I think. Yeah, a little inhumane. Yeah, and it made sense in Alien. The deleted. I don't know if I told you. There's a deleted scene in Alien where she found the captain who went missing, uh, and he says, "Kill me," and she lights him on fire. But that's because that's the only weapon she had. Uh, and I get they want to recreate that. But yeah, they, she's going to be like, can I borrow a gun and yeah. shoot this thing in the face? And then like, yeah. Uh, but even Ron Perlman calls her out. He's like, that's a waste of ammo. Must be a chick thing. Like, was that a chick thing? Can very, you... very Joss Whedon. Yeah, I was going to say that was very Joss Whedon. Mm -hmm. yeah, very, yeah. very Josh Whedon. Yes, I agree. Josh... <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he's like, I didn't write that line. I didn't write that line. I love women. Yeah, the French guy added it. That that French guy wrote that line. I, I, I love women. You should that. come back to my yeah. uh, hotel. And we should talk <laughs> about how much. Come back to my house. Talk <laughs> yeah, about come back to my how, house. <laughs> how bad that was. <laughs> <laughs> they stumble by another room, which is all the dead cargo. Like, just all the bodies. They've all had their chests ripped out. But there's one guy who's alive. Uh, Purvis, the unfortunately named Purvis, played by uh, Leland Orser, who's in a bunch of movies. And for some reason, the only one that springs to mind is Escape from L.A. at the moment. But he's in a lot of movies. He's a really good character actor. Uh, he really wants to know what's inside him. What's inside me? <laughs> this scene is so frustrating. I'm like, can so much answer this guy's question? They're all like, oh, it's in him. We got to shoot him. Oh, no, we can't do that. He's like, what, what's inside me? 
What's he asks? To his credit, he asks real politely like fifteen times, and then he just finally screams. They're like, "Yeah, you got a monster in you." No, Ripley just bluntly is just like, "Yeah, so you got this. And this is how you're gonna die." And it's I not, love that he goes, it's gonna be "Who are you?" As fuck. <laughs> they use this in the trailer. He's like, "Who are you?" And she like smiles. Who are you? Oh yeah, so Cole insists that they keep him alive and freeze him to take it out earlier, which they always talk about doing in the previous films, but then they never do. Yeah. They have to swim, and this is like the most memorable scene in the movie. It was used in all the advertisements. It's so good. What did you think of the, uh, the swimming scene? That was my favorite scene. It was yeah. pretty good. It was pretty good. I now, said, there's no way they could hold her about that long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's bull. Although people are saying that What's-Her-Face... For Avatar 2, Kate Winslet, oh, apparently. nine minutes or something Yeah, she like said she that? held her breath for nine minutes. And yeah, that's... she now holds the record. No, no, it seems like a lie. I'm willing to believe the basketball making in one shot. Her holding her breath for nine minutes. I'm Whatever. like, that seems like bullshit. Um, there, like, Kate Winslet is a huge actress. I'm sure there's, like, an insurance person that's like, absolutely fucking not. <laughs> no way. You just, yeah. Like, what are you doing here? Now, they are just regular aliens in the water. They are not aqua aliens, as that uh, toy shows. Huh. Prism Mike, I don't know if you want to show that off. <laughs> I guess someone told the toy company that the aliens are going to be in water. And they're like, okay, we'll make a fish-looking alien. It's a cool design, but it's just, that's not what they look like. I like this scene mainly because it's nice to see the alien outside of the environment that we always see it in. Which yeah, we've never actually ship. seen it, like, swimming. That was pretty which cool. It swims really cool. And the CGI is not too terrible here. No, it's not awful. Yeah. Um, I think it gets a little awful when it's climbing the ladder. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. I think I know what's wrong with that. Uh, but yeah, I like, uh, Ron Perlman uses his grenade launcher and it just like it just blows really, yeah. up the one. That was pretty cool. They, speaking of P, they told some stories behind that. Cause they had to throw like food and stuff down there. Cause it was a kitchen area and they had to put milk in the water to make, give it that like uh milky look to it that, cause but, they didn't yeah. want it to look too clear. Uh, but apparently they're, I think when on a rider was like, after a while you're in there for a while, people just start peeing cause they don't feel like getting out of the thing. How would you do? How would you feel swimming around Winona Ryder's pee being chased by aliens? I mean, if it's Winona, <laughs> I'm okay with that. Is it appropriate to pee in a in a tank on a film set? I mean, it's okay to pee in a shower. So. <laughs> <laughs> Options are endless here. <laughs> He just pees everywhere. Yeah. I All guess right. if you're filming for like hours and hours, you just want to get it done. You're like, I don't feel like going to the bathroom and slowing this down. I'm just peeing. To, to be fair, like, yeah, like there's pee, but there's milk in, in the water. Yeah, yes. I'd be like, I'd fuck it at that point. Pee. I'd be like, yeah. whatever. Yeah, but you're not supposed to drink that water. It's just still swimming. I mean, it's getting in you somehow, whatever. It's getting yeah, absorbed yeah. in your skin. Orifice. and Yeah. Uh, Every but, orifice. <laughs> your body, yeah. I, but I like I like how the one al I like how the alien dodges the the bullet and just lets the yeah. other one the other blow one die. Yeah, the that other was one pretty cool. Uh, Hillard gets killed because they realized her character was boring. Yeah, I don't know why Joss Whedon would write such a boring female character. I thought he was above that, but you know, I'm not here to question. I don't want to go home with her. You know what? She probably turned him down. Yeah. So he wrote that scene, and that's why she's not in many movies after this. Mm. Cancel Joss Whedon again. It's been several times, I think. Um, yeah, so they realized the aliens set a trap. This is a real elaborate trap that the aliens set. So, like, they had to assume that someone would swim there. They had to bring the eggs there and then put the weird thing on top of it. I just don't think they're that smart. Like, I know they're smart, but this seems, like, obnoxiously smart. Uh, but, yeah, the it's, it's cool that the face hugger goes on Ripley because it's like, what would that have... Yeah. What would that have birthed? That would have birthed like a really weird alien. And God, I I wonder if we're going to see a really weird alien in this. Nah, I don't think so. Um, but again, speaking of blood, she bites the tail off of it. Yeah. Is it because she's underwater? Does that not make the acid work? Like, what the fuck is going Maybe on here? Maybe it dilutes here? it or... Maybe it dilutes it. I don't know. But yeah, uh, they are climbing the ladder. Call goes to open the thing. Ren's like, can I borrow your gun? Right. Bad move. Bad move. Bad move. He kills Call. Mm. Drops her in the water, and the alien's like, yeah, that's cute. Whatever. Uh, so he leaves and locks them well, all behind. Well, I mean, behind. also... Because, what we're about to find out. Yeah. Um, he leaves them all behind, because he wants to get out, but he doesn't want them, because he'll be fucked. Because, like, technically, if they make it back to Earth, he's in a lot of trouble, because yeah. they weren't supposed to be doing any of this. Like, it was all illegal. Yeah, the alien uh, jumps out, uh, climbs the ladder after them. Uh, this part... What I think it is... Is they it the have, ray tracing? Not ray tracing. 
Well, they, a, did they use ray tracing? In well, this? what I think it is, they wanted like the water on it to look shiny, but like CGI water wasn't that great yet, mm. so it just looks weird. The whole alien looks weird here when it's CGI. Uh, but yeah, so they're trying to shoot it. It's I don't know how they keep missing it. It's like just right. Yeah, it's gigantic. It's just coming yeah. up the, like straight line. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it, funny enough, and I'll explain this later when I review the game later this week. They shoot it in the middle of the head and it explodes. That's that's actually a game mechanic, and they work that into the game. Sure. <laughs> but I like that it, it like sits there for a second, like huh, and then explodes. Also. This is the first time we clearly see the alien spit acid. It did it in Alien 3, but it was, like, so frantic you couldn't tell. Uh, but, yeah, I guess the acid... I can't tell what's going on here with Christy. The, the acid is on his face, and then he decides to cut his harness so the wheelchair guy can get away. But it's like, was he dying? Maybe it was melting through to his brain? That's what I was thinking. Because, like, know. it you, was, like, think? here. Mike? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, they kill the alien, they get up there, and then Call opens up the door for them. And that's a big mystery. How did Call survive? Now, I have a problem with this scene. Do you, do you know what Ripley says to her? What does Ripley say to her? She goes, You took it in the chest, I saw it. And then she, it cuts, and she's touching her belly where the bullet hole is. I'm like, you literally just <laughs> said chest. You just, why did... Because yeah, it wasn't it like down here? She was like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah! I didn't, even, I didn't even notice that, but yeah, you're right. Well, they were doing ADR or something. They should have been like, oh, change it to belly. Like, it's just so annoying. She's like, you took it in the chest. Or and let's just like, put it like belly. here. Like, whatever. I can't blame Joss Whedon for that one. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, the she is an android. She's a robot, like the previous ones. But she's a robot designed by robots that were part of some robot rebellion. Because they didn't like being robots. They wanted to be free-thinking organisms or something. Uh, yeah, and she was here to sabotage their whole uh, situation. So, yeah, we find out the reason she was giving Ripley so much shit for being half alien and not human. she's projecting. She was projecting because she, I guess she's programmed to feel insecure. Seems like a weird thing to program into an alien. She's insecure that she is not human. So she's like, she hates herself. She's projecting it on Ripley. Uh, which is actually a pretty interesting concept. I wish they kind of did more with it, I guess. They explored it a little bit mm. better, but it's kind of interesting. She plugs into the ship's computer, but before that, we find out that she's Christian. What did you think about that? I love it. You love it? Would you like to say a prayer right now, actually? Um, no, but I mean, this is Alien <laughs> Resurrection, and I just want to mention the best resurrection there was, and that was the res resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh... And then after that, Lazarus. That was a pretty good resurrection. Yes. Yes, I yeah. like the resurrection of Lazarus. What about Ra's al Ghul? That is where the... <laughs> okay, the Bible did it first, and the name was used for the Batman comics, <laughs> the Lazarus Pit, but it came from the Bible, you asshole. I know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's funny. She does the sign of the cross, and Ripley's like, you're programmed to do that? <laughs> so it's like, I guess if the alien, the, the robots were like, hey, we, uh, we have free will, even though we were created synthetically, they're like, I choose to be religious, I guess. Mm. Also, they're still putting chapels on spaceships that far in the future. Good mm. for them. Little interesting. There were no synagogues there. Raises a lot of questions. But we're not here to explore those these days. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Actually, funny you mentioned it. Um, the production designer, one of them, originally the ship was going to be shaped like a cross to fit in with the resurrection theme. But I think that design they ended up reworking and using for the Mark Wahlberg Planet of the Apes movie because the space station in that was oh actually shaped God. like a cross. So I think the guy was like, I didn't get to do my cross ship. I'm going to use it for Planet of the Apes for some goddamn reason. Not even the good Planet of the Apes. like the Although I don't really hate the Tim Burton Planet of the Apes. It's just, it's not great compared to the other ones. Well, I don't like that movie because a married man decided to leave his wife for another woman. Oh, did you know that? No. A monkey woman. So director <laughs> director Tim Burton was dating uh, Lisa Marie, not Presley, not the late mm -hmm. Lisa Marie Presley. Lisa Thoughts Marie. And prayers. Yeah. Huh? Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Yeah. He was dating Lisa Marie for years. I don't know if he was married to her. I think they were just dating. No, I think they were just dating. And then on the set of Planet of the Apes, he cast his current girlfriend as an ape lady. And then Helena Bonham Carter also as an ape lady. And on the set of that movie, he fell in love with Helena Bonham Carter and cheated on his girlfriend with her. 
and ended up marrying Hell. But that means I wonder if she wore the ape. Well, that's the thing. That means that means Tim Burton. He's a that fairy. Tim, Tim Burton was <laughs> on set looking at two girls he likes dressed as apes and being like, "She's a way hotter ape." Like that, that, that's a conversation he had to have with himself. It's so weird. <laughs> Oh, man. She stayed with him for a really long time. They're broken up now. But mm -hmm. anyway, anyway, I would love to talk about Tim Burton having sex with ape ladies all day long, but we got to get back to Alien Resurrection. <laughs> she plugs into the computer uh, and she starts making a path uh, to the ship. She screws over Ren. She lets all the aliens know where he is. Like she has like lights directing to him, which, which I think is pretty funny. Um, they realize they can't blow the ship. Because I'm sure someone was like, we can't blow up the ship. We've already blown up like a few things in these movies. We've got to do something different. So she's like, can you just crash it? Can you just crash it On into Earth? Earth? <laughs> yeah, just crash it into Earth. I'm like, not even the moon. Just Earth. Yeah, I would have been like, hey, can you crash it into the moon? Just in case an alien gets out. Can we crash it into the moon? But I don't know, maybe the moon. Did you know, did you know some women think the sun and the moon are the same thing? What are you, Chelsea Handler? Oh, and like I like Ripley's like... So why are you here again? She's like, well, I found out that the crew was going to get there and I knew they all die and more people could die. And Ripley's like, what are you, an asshole? <laughs> like, why do you care about these people? And she goes, you're the new asshole model they're putting out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, on the way to the Betty, they find out that they're uh, close to the nest uh, and they try not to tell anyone about the whole ship crashing, but then they find out and Ron Perlman has my favorite line where he's like, I will kill you. Kill you! Does that compute? Or do I have to draw you a schematic? But she's like, oh, the queen's in pain. I got to go help her. And then, like, she just lets the aliens take her into the hive. Yeah, because then she she falls through the, the they, floor. They call yeah. it, like, the viper pit. <laughs> but I guess it's, like, the nest or the hive. It looks kind of cool. You see, like, mm -hmm. there's other aliens in there. And again, like, the hive and aliens, that looked cool, too, with, like, all the, the gooey stuff ever. But mm. now it, like, moves and shit. It's just more alive. Uh, but, yeah, this is the only time we've ever seen, like, an alien, like, carrying Ripley and her like hugging it back like that's bizarre to see also yeah I could see how some people had an issue with this one they're like I thought she was just gonna shoot more aliens this time now she's hugging them yeah, what she, the hell it was a very like intimate moment yeah it was very yeah. well James Cameron has a thing where he's like uh, uh, Sigourney Weaver told me what she wanted to do with the alien and she's like, I, one of the things was like, I want to die. And then one of her requests was she wanted to have sex with the alien. And I guess this is the closest they ever got to that. You know what? Good for her. <laughs> Good for her. Maybe, maybe the women are. <laughs> <laughs> maybe women are okay because yeah. they want to have sex with the yeah. alien. Oh, my God. I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> but before we cut back to Ripley, Ren has been on the Betty. And he's going to, like, try and force them to take him off the ship. And I actually like this moment where, like, Purvis... Sorry, that name's funny. He knows the aliens coming out of him, and he uses that moment to be heroic. Uh, now, I think we talked about this in Alien Three, or maybe I talked about it with you. There was an idea in Alien Three, like one of the five versions of Alien Three that didn't get made, that there was going to be a head burster, and they kind of did it in this, where he grabs the guy's yeah. head, puts it to his chest, and the alien pops out of the guy's brain. That's freaking awesome! I, don't I know. I thought this kill was cool. I thought that was really, yeah. really cool. And then they they don't know what to do, and they all just start shooting both of them. It's so insanely violent and over the top. Like you kind of have to applaud it. You're like, I can't believe they got. What would you do? I know you'd probably be running the other way, but like normal people probably be like, oh yeah, we're killing this thing because we're not gonna have another one of these. No, I I would shoot it because there's not a lot of places to run because they're on a smaller ship. Tony would just leave everyone there and just walk away. <laughs> just, That's what he would do. It would be like that girl from uh, Jason X, whatever, just take off, <laughs> blow up yourself in the meantime. <laughs> I would be like, I'd be like, guys, I think it's over there. And I would just open the airlock and be like, I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> so they're all good. <laughs> uh, but yes, cuts back to Ripley. Um, it turns out Brad Dorif is alive. <laughs> And thank God he is, because he's explaining everything. Dude, I'm sorry. I loved it. It was so stupid, <laughs> the way he's talking. Uh, and I think it's kind of weird that his character was purposely kept alive. I guess he's supposed to be food for the newborn. Mm. He was purposely kept alive so he could deliver this information to the audience, I guess. Maybe because Joss Whedon didn't trust the intelligence of his audience to understand what was happening, because Joss Whedon thinks the common people are idiots. That's just my assumption. Um, he's such a good guy. Uh, um, yeah, he's all like, by the way, Ripley, so the queen was laying eggs and everything was normal. And then she stopped and grew a giant vag. Now she's having baby like a, like a human does. 
And like he goes like, and now she is perfect. I'm like, this is way more inefficient than laying eggs. Like the egg thing was fine. That was working really well. Now she's got to pop out one of these things at a time. Every single, like that, this seems like they, this seems like worse, right? Am I crazy? I'd rather drop some eggs and have to. I'd rather to, drop some yeah. eggs. The <laughs> eggs were optional. Uh, but yeah, so there's a giant 40 foot vagina on screen. <laughs> what did you think about that? I mean, it looked like Sigourney Weaver knew all about that vagina. <laughs> <laughs> what was Brad Dorf saying about it? Like, uh, she's doing it for you or something? Like, what was he saying again? He's like, that is your gift to her, yeah, Ripley. That, yeah. And she's, yeah. Uh, but I like that the queen is, like, propped up and just, like, she, like, only her two little arms are moving because the other ones are propped up because she's, like, screaming. It's like, the, the other aliens couldn't build her, like, a nice chair or something. <laughs> <laughs> chair? Birthing chair. So then the newborn alien pops out of her. <laughs> the beautiful, little beautiful, beautiful butter. Yeah. Was it weird that that guy kept talking in the chunky voice, being like, "You're a beautiful butterfly." <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful now, butterfly. I have the action figure for the newborn here. It's they, missing something. I'll get to that. They made a bigger <laughs> one. So the Alien Resurrection toys. They made like a big alien figure that was the first movie's alien for some reason. But I just found out that they made what was that? Oh, I'm just looking at the boxes. Okay. Like the they made like a big newborn alien. It was like super limited, and I kind of <clears> want to <throat> hunt that down. Now, Prison Mike, you might notice this uh, alien's not really packing anything, right? It's like like a Barbie doll, nice and smooth, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So originally, they decided, oh, the alien is like half alien, half human. What kind of human is it? Like, they decided to give it male and female genitals. <laughs> so it's literally, it was literally. A vagina with a big penis in it. They shot the the movie with this, and in editing, they were like, "Oh my god, we have to. <laughs> this can't. We cannot put a movie out with this. This is horrifying." And even the director says, "Because he said he said uh, 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 even for a Frenchman, it was too much." In like the wider shots, they had to spend thousands of dollars digitally airbrushing this fucking thing's crotch to get rid of its weird penis vagina that was flopping around. And it was one of those things where it's like, why, why did they even build it? Like someone should have known. Like as they were building it, someone should have been like, oh, they're just gonna cut this later. Let's not even do it. I don't even know how it got approved. That's the weird. Like, the fact what? that it made it so far. However. Hmm. I think the NECA figure, they make a new figure of this and they include the genitals in no, like as fans really want to. <laughs> no, they don't. Yeah, they do. Um, and it's really great. If you look up the actual like statue they have in their work, their workshop, it's so gross looking. Um, but yeah, so the newborn, are you looking up the NECA figure? Maybe. Are you about to buy it? <laughs> Thinking about it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so the, the newborn comes out and I remember being a kid going, what? What is this? I thought she was going to fight the queen again. What is going on? And I remember hating this thing. I hated this whole ending. I hated this thing for years and years and years. And now I think it's awesome and hilarious. Yeah, I think. Um, <laughs> what did you think the first time you saw it? I busted out laughing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I busted out laughing. What did you think, Prison Mike? I thought it was really cute. <laughs> That was pretty cute. It looks like a baby. It does. <laughs> looks like a baby. It's a beautiful, beautiful butterfly. You know, I wonder if my sister saw this movie. She gave birth recently, and I wonder if this movie was as accurate as that. Yeah, very relatable. Be like, oh yeah, <laughs> I, I remember my doing sister that. Can relate to the Queen Alien. <laughs> my sister had. To I mean, it might have been a C-section, so probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ripley should have been nice and done a C-section for her. Anyway, why couldn't the other aliens do it for her? <laughs> All right, now I have a question. Okay. So this is the most emotion we've ever seen from a queen alien. It's like crying kind yeah, of. Yeah, just it's like, like oh. my baby. Oh. And like the newborn alien, it's like, I have no idea what this thing is. And just slaps the top of its head off. And I remember being a kid just going, what? I'm like, I wanted to see a queen alien fight. And it's like vomiting blood up and it's dead. But yeah, this whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, so the other aliens are still there. Shouldn't they be there? Right? Shouldn't the other aliens Maybe be Maybe she was there? like, I need this to be a private moment between me and my daughter, <laughs> she Ripley. She told that to yeah. <laughs> So she was like, other aliens. I would like to have a private moment with me and my baby that I care about. And they were like, did our mom just say she has a favorite? <laughs> okay. But yeah, the whole time, I'm like, shouldn't the alien... Because remember in Aliens, Ripley went to burn the... Like the aliens showed mm -hmm. up and the queen was like, hey, back up, back up, back up. We got stuff going on here. Um, yeah, so that was a little bizarre. If this movie was made now... 
A hundred percent, they would have had because with more digital effects, they would have had a scene where this newborn killed a couple of the yeah. aliens. That's I think what you needed because it's weird that they're just not there. <laughs> they just let the queen die. But yeah, it thinks Ripley's its mother, and again because I assume Joss Whedon just just thinks we're idiots. They need a Brad Dorf to go. It thinks it's your mother. It's like now, nah, yeah, we got it, and it kind of has to go. It's your go, mother, huh? You said you think it's your mother. It, it thinks you Your, are its mother. Yeah. <laughs> um, it kind of has Sigourney Weaver's like skull structure, which is kind of creepy. Yeah. And it has eyes. It's the first alien to have eyes. And it has like. And they're really deep sunken in dark Yeah, eyes. deep like, sunken in like eyes. three but... inches back. Like, yeah. And it's got why the weird... are they so far back? It has like a weird. I like the nose. Un- undeveloped nose. I like the, no- the little like little <laughs> point that points out actually. Yeah, but it doesn't even have like scary eyes. It has like big puppy dog <laughs> eyes. Yeah, it's, it's Disney eyes. Is the yeah, thing like Puss in Boots. It reminded me of Puss yeah, Boots. Right? Eyes. <laughs> basically Puss in Boots. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that new Puss in Boots is good. Yeah, very good. Apparently. I won't see it. Cartoons are for children. Oh, my God. But um, I hear it's pretty good. Uh, Pass this to me so I don't, like, knock everything over. I want to look at him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have the sunken eye. It's just black. Yeah. Yeah. It does have a little, like, doohickey nose, though. Oh, I should say, while we're doing this. Hold on. What is that? That's uh, the Betty, the ship. Uh, <laughs> sure. Real Whatever. quick, real quick. I should plug. Let's do a little plug before we get back to the movie. Um, I can't show you images of it, but on Patreon, we just put up ah. uh, Nick Code. I finally got his name right. Nick Code did uh, amazing illustrations of each of us with an alien. Uh, it's it's uh, Joe with the Xeno. Rest in peace, Joe, with the original Xenomorph, me with the Queen. Prison Mike, you're there too. You're there with the dog alien. Yeah, I'm the best one there. <laughs> I, I showed Prison Mike in between edits. Uh, and Johanna as Ripley with uh, the newborn. Above. And I specifically said to the guy, I was like, you need to show its eyes more and make its face dumber. And I went, have its tongue sticking out. Uh, Is that like but drooling on me? It's drooling on you. Uh, it's like the coolest like background ever. Yeah, you that's got- going to be my, like I'm going to stretch that and it's going to be my yeah. PC like on both monitors. So it's um it's at our $10 <laughs> tier. At that tier, you get exclusive live streams and exclusive wallpapers every month, except for November when I forgot. Anyway, yeah, so the alien thinks that Ripley's its mother. It's all like trying to like hug her and everything. And Ripley's and she's like, like Ugh. <laughs> Ripley doesn't really know what to think because I think Ripley's like, is this thing going to kill me? Like, it just killed her. Yeah. Why would it, it kill me? It technically killed its mother, but I guess I look like him. Uh, but I like when Brad Dorif thinks it's going to like him, too. He's like, come here. And the, the newborn literally goes, huh? Like, real excited. <laughs> and then it just bites his freaking head off. She hightails it out of there. And the newborn is not thrilled about this. Nope. Uh, but yeah, then it becomes like a whole thing where, like, I like how in the, the crew of the ship, none of the pilots survived. So they're all, like, guessing how to fly the ship. They're like, I guess we do this. And... I guess we do that. Uh, meanwhile, Ripley's running. Good for them. Ripley is a pilot. I like how that worked out for them. <laughs> and I love the line when she does get to the ship where she does that epic jump across the thing. I like when she's he's like, uh, do you know how to pilot this? She's like, this piece of shit's older than me. Uh, uh. <laughs> <clears throat> and then, of course, you get the line, I thought you were dead. Yeah, I get that a lot. The door, the airlock wasn't closed. And then calls like, you know what? I'll go and check it out by myself. Smart. Right away, Ripley should be like, no, no, I know how this one ends. Let's all go back <laughs> there together with guns. Uh, so, yeah, she goes. And I like that the alien actually does shut the door for her. I thought that was considerate. It's just like, oh, OK. Uh, but, yeah, the newborn kind of is keeping call like hostage, not hostage, but like, yeah, it's I like guess... inside that thing. And it's trying to reach her. But it, but it doesn't her. look like she's trying. It's trying to kill her right away. I think it's just like like seeing a lady. It's like, oh, there's another girl, and I Maybe guess it wants to have a plaything. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just is looking for a mother figure. Uh, but unfortunately, I think she realizes it's a robot, and she's just like, nah, I'm not having this. It's funny, like, call basically, call fell into the water earlier, and realistically, she just got up, and because she's a robot, doesn't need to breathe, and the aliens just left her alone because they don't give a shit about. If a robot is not trying to kill an alien, you notice they never go after the robots. They're like, yeah, we don't care. We can't make more aliens out of you. Who cares? Uh, but yeah, this this alien wants to play with her, I guess. And then poor De Stefano goes back there to look for her. And his freaking head gets like, like it's like a watermelon. This thing crushes yeah. his head like a watermelon. That was awesome. Again, how could you not like this movie? And it even like shows <laughs> its brain on his hand. Like it's all happy about it. It was like, huh? <laughs> 
But after Cole and DeStefano both disappear, Ripley's problem. Ripley's finally like, oh, yeah, I know what's happening here. Doesn't have the psychic link with that one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, just, I like the whole thing where she's like, hey, I'm your real mother. Come here. Be be friends with me. She's like rubbing on it. They're yeah. rubbing on each other. Yeah, that's a little <laughs> weird. That's a little weird. I don't know many parents that go up to their kids like this. Tom little... Brady. Oh, yeah, Tom oh, Brady. Yeah. Right on the lips. What is, <laughs> did you see the newest thing? Um, his teenage kid was like on his lap. They took a picture of like their feet next to the pool and then they flipped it and it's him kissing his teenage. It's like, dude. No, I did not see that. I'm like, what the fuck is going? Like, like I get it. But like also like, no, there's a certain age where that needs to stop. Yeah. yeah. I feel like teens like that's a little. Yeah. Yeah. Even the earlier stuff was a little weird, but I know there's like. I'm from an Italian family. I don't do the overly kissing things, but the Italians are known to do that. Very, yeah. very kissy. Yeah. But I also, I've never <laughs> sat on my dad's leg. Like, that's weird. That's weird. So Tom Brady should really be this alien's parent. Uh, he would really get along with yeah. it. Uh, instead, Ripley uh, tricks the thing. She, like, cuts her hand on the tooth. <sighs> okay. So the little bit of acid Ooh. blood makes a tiny hole. And that is the strongest hole in the world. Yeah, it was just sucked right out. And then, and well, it, no, it, it, the alien said, this sucks. And then it was just sucked out, <laughs> no, right? Was, you're mixing that with Jason X where the girl gets sucked out. Um, <laughs> you ever see Jason X? No. That's where Jason goes to space. Oh, that makes sense. A girl it literally dies the same way as this, but it's not as cool. Yeah, you don't see her sucked out. It's literally just like blood yeah. afterwards. But she has a good one-liner. She says, this sucks on so many levels. And then she dies. Watch our Jason X review. <laughs> um, yeah. It, so the little tiny hole is the strongest thing in the world. But in Aliens, when she opened up that big airlock and like the little kid and whatnot were grabbing on, that didn't seem as strong as this tiny hole. Like what? I, maybe, I'm not a Different scientist. Different pressure from how <laughs> I don't I know. Like, Wait a I don't know. What? No, I thought you were a scientist. Oh, when it comes to biological, you can clone people, okay. but yeah, huh? You can clone people. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm a biologist. I, I am not a physicist. Mm. Uh, okay, mm. <laughs> or whatever mm. the whatever uh, the. Type thank you of for <laughs> thank you for clarifying. <laughs> but I think we joked about it in the aliens, like when Ripley is like on the ladder and opens up the airlock. Realistically, her arm just should have shredded yeah. off. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, uh, this poor alien, little cut in its back, just pours all the guts out. It's the most violent death. And you feel kind of bad for it. Because it looks like, so scared. It has that thing where, like, it, it's, it's, sorry, this is sad. It's like when you take a dog to be put down. Like, it's like, it's like, uh, the dog trusts you and you have to do it, but you feel yeah. bad. And it's like, why are we going to the vet? It's like, really? So that's what Ripley's going through right now. And it, like, took forever, too. Like, it like, took a like, really Ripley long just, like, time. Loves painful, long deaths. Also, think about Ripley. Like, her, her daughter died. The girl that was that she met that she was trying to be a mother to also died. I mean, she killed her alien queen baby the one time. Uh, and then the queen alien, which was also her daughter, also just died. So this is like the fourth or fifth kid of hers that has died. Uh, yeah. So I get why she's sad. I get why she could be a little sad. But yeah, it's brutal. Like the guts pour out of it and then get sucked right back in. And they even go right down to the skull. Like, even the skull, like, cracks. And then that's not even enough. They have to show all the guts and bones, like, flying into it's space. Like, that's fucking brutal. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great effect, though. Mm -hmm. It's a great yeah, effect. Yeah. Say what you will about the end of this movie and if you like the newborn or not. That is a really the cool thing. The sound effect. it makes really upsets me. Huh? The sound it makes <laughs> really upsets me. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then she's just crying like I'm sorry, and I'm like, oh my god, why? She you... apologizes yeah. to it. Why are you just standing there watching? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't apologize to the other aliens she killed. Oh my god, they were technically her. This awful. one wasn't her. her. <laughs> oh, <I guess. laughs> yeah, what about that alien that was hugging Don't her worry earlier? About it. She's probably like, I'm sorry to that guy too. <laughs> I feel bad for him. Don't worry about it. <laughs> So, yes, uh, they suck her out. <laughs> the ship almost burns up in reentry, which is pretty funny. Now, they crash the ship onto Earth. Yeah. That is the biggest explosion. They blew up the side of, like, some continent. I hope no one was there. Because that is, like, a huge explosion to the point it's, like, moving it the like nuclear, yeah. Yeah, it looked like a giant nuclear explosion. Don't they show, um, I think it's, like, deleted or whatever, extended or whatever, that they're yeah. in, like, fucking Paris. Yeah, I'll get Maybe yeah. that explosion <laughs> got rid of Paris. So, so what happened? Um, 
I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what happened is uh, the thing crashes. They all survive. In the theatrical cut, they're looking out the window at Earth with the clouds. And she's like, well, it's beautiful. I didn't expect it to be. And I like where she's like, so what happens now? And Ripley's like, I have no idea. <laughs> she's like, I've been in space for 400 something years. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm just I'm just thrilled to not be in space anymore. Um, but in the ex the special edition, they have the same line of dialogue. But you're right; they're in like a like a broken like a post apocalypse Paris. Yeah, like the Eiffel Tower is broken. I don't know if that is. I don't think that implies that like the ship blew up Paris. I think Paris no, just definitely looks no, like yeah. that in the future. But yeah, if they left that scene in the theatrical cut, it'll be the only time Ripley was actually on Earth. Because mm -hmm. in Alien, she's on a space station, but she never makes it back yep. down there. Uh, but yeah, and it just kind of ends on this weird note where it's like, all right, well, Ripley's back, kind of. And they crashed into Earth when they had died. Well, no, their ship. Oh, they okay, were on, you're right. You're they right, were on yeah. a smaller you're ship. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it kind of ends on like, I could see why they had a lot of trouble with the ending for this because it just kind of is like, all right, well, we killed another alien that snuck on the ship. This is like the third time we've done it. Uh, and then and then now they're on Earth and they're just walking around or they're just looking out a window. I, I get why Pete. I think originally they were supposed to fight the newborn on Earth. And for whatever reason, that didn't happen. I don't know why. Wasn't there something with like um, Alien versus Predator? Because that technically happens on Earth. No, because that wasn't no. even in development at this mm. point. Uh, but yeah, that is Alien Resurrection. It's weird and it's wacky. But I think it's also fine and fun. I was what, do, say, what do you think? It's fine and fun. It's fun and fine. I really... <sighs> I really did hate it for a long time. I never hated it. Yeah. I really, really did hate it for a long time. You, ha you held a couple grudges during this for <laughs> several years. Yeah. But I think it was after I saw Alien vs. Predator, I walked out and I was like, I think Alien Resurrection was better than that. And I could have sworn Alien vs. Predator was going to be better because I was 13 and that's how I thought. Now that I'm an adult and someone said, do you think Alien vs. Predator would be good? I'd be like, yeah, probably not, to be honest. <laughs> um... Yeah, I, I've grown to really like it. Those first four movies, I genuinely really love. Yeah. love. Uh, and yeah, it's weird. And I even the director will be like, well, I tried. I tried to make a Hollywood movie. I did my best. <laughs> um, they really went for it. I like what they did with Ripley because technically it's a different Ripley. Mm -hmm. So it kind of doesn't diminish Alien 3 too much because like the real Ripley technically is dead. So I kind of get it. There's some cool ideas in there. There's some dumb shit in it. There's some dumb stuff in the script, <clears throat> although Joss Whedon wouldn't say that. <laughs> I, I have a quote from Joss Whedon here. No, Let's hear no. it. It wasn't a question of doing everything differently, although they changed the ending. It was mostly a matter of doing everything wrong. They said the lines mostly, but they said them all wrong. And they cast it wrong. And they designed it wrong. And they scored it wrong. He's even got a problem with the fucking music. They did everything wrong that they could possibly do. There's actually a fascinating lesson in filmmaking because everything that they did reflects back to the script or looks like something from the script. And people assume that if I hated it, then they changed the script. But it wasn't so much that they changed the script. It's that they just executed it in such a ghastly fashion as to render it almost unwatchable. I think he's being a little harsh. I think the movie looks great. I think yeah. it sounds great. If anything, his script isn't that great. Again, yeah. he pointed out, like, the, the acid blood is inconsistent. There's no reason for the captain to go down there. The hidden door leading to the tunnel in the prison is stupid. Like, he's acting like he's the only good guy in this situation. He acts like a good guy a lot, apparently. Right. And it's like, no, you're, you're also to blame. Like, everyone yeah. else will kind of, like, be like, yeah, I guess I could have done that better. I could have done that better. And Joss Whedon for years is like, no, everything I did was great. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. They all screwed it up. And I think... Recently, I'll see if I can find the quote. I think recently the director kind of was like, shut up. Like, I think he kind of responded to that. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's I think it's a fun time. I think people need to give it a chance. I, With Alien 3, I keep telling people, like, hey, check out the assembly cut. There is a good movie there. It's still a little flawed, but you might like it. Alien Resurrection, I'm like, if you don't like this one, I totally understand. Yeah. I mean, I like it, but if it's Prison Mike, if you were like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I hated that baby at the end. I'd be like, yeah, I could see that. I could see that. I, I liked it. it How bad. would you rank this? On a scale of what? If you had to rank the first four movies. Oh, um. I would probably rank it three, <clears throat> two, 
Resurrection, and one. You put a one at the bottom? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, no, I'm going one, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good job, Prism Mike. <laughs> <laughs> You know, maybe he will like Prometheus and Alien Covenant. Oh, maybe, God. Maybe he'll like those. Maybe he'll like <laughs> Alien vs. Predator. <laughs> you know what? I could see Prison Mike being like, yeah, Alien vs. Predator was awesome. <laughs> How would you rank it? Yeah, one, two, three, four. Okay. But, yeah, if, if we factor in the other sequels, like... <sighs> God damn. Like, is this... Th I think this is better. Like, people are mad that I like this more than Prometheus. What? How? Prometheus sucks. Yeah, I know. Like, like, how are people mad? No, but they're like, yeah, but the original director came back. I'm like, yeah, well, that's why. That's what makes Prometheus even worse. It's like, oh, the original guy came back and he made it suck. I'm like, that, that kind of makes it worse. Uh, Alien Covenant was terrible. Me and you. <laughs> we were so mad. <laughs> me and her saw Alien Covenant in the theater. And I think. <laughs> Did I bust out laughing? So there's two robots <laughs> in Alien Covenant. Uh, who plays them? Uh, the um, Magneto guy. Yeah, uh, Michael uh, Fassbender. Michael Fassbender. So the his his the evil British Michael Fassbender is playing the flute. He's the British alien. Oh, the bit British robot. And then the good American Michael Fassbender comes in, and they play the flute together. And he puts the flute in his mouth and goes, "I'll do the fingering." And they play the flute together, and then they kiss each other. And I, we just, we sat in the theater going, what the fuck is this? I'm like, who, what is this? What the fuck? I was being a kiss in that scene in um, Resurrection where he, uh, uh, Ron Perlman kissed the guy in a wheelchair. And that was just, it was weird. Well, that was a celebratory kiss. Yeah, he, he slipped some tongue in there. That was, that was like, I was like, Whoa. It was like long and You know weird. what's funny? Because there's so much sexual tension between Ripley and Call, and they never even get close. Meanwhile, Ron Perlman's like, let me lay one on you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. And then Michael Fassbender's fingering himself. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the worst one is probably Alien vs. Predator Requiem, just because you can't see anything. Mm. We rank that as worst Predator movie. The second Alien vs. Predator, it, the whole movie's like, sh like shot in the dark. Like you cannot I hate that. You can, and it's not even. And then, for, then it always makes a glare, and it's just weird. Yes, it's like you ass. cannot you see the film. Me. It's weird. It's dumb. But anyway, that is it for Alien Resurrection. Thank you so much, Prison Mike. Thanks I'm for, glad I brought you for back. To me life. back, Tony. Uh, yeah. So appreciate that. So Alien Resurrection, the Holy Resurrection, Lazarus Resurrection, <laughs> and the Resurrection of Prison Mike. Those are all <laughs> the resurrections. <laughs> Halloween Resurrection, oh although technically God. no one was resurrected in Halloween <laughs> no. Resurrection. That, that title makes no sense. <laughs> the franchise was resurrected. I don't no, it died I know, after I know, that. I Literally, know, Alien, I know. Halloween Resurrection was so terrible, they're like, we have to remake it. There's no <laughs> way we can follow up on this. Uh, but yeah, let us know what you guys think of Alien Resurrection. And I'll try my best to bring Joe from Movie Dumpster back to life. I'll try my best. What if I bring him back to life and he's like, Wah! do I light him on fire? Yeah. I should probably Let shoot him. On fire. Yeah. Let him on fire and then kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill him first. And yes, uh, check back later this week for my just like the movie review of Alien Resurrection. It's not a full on game review. I'm just comparing it to the movie. People got confused. They thought it was. Watch it. It's going to be really good. Goodbye. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talk, talk, talking, talking about tapes.